Round 17, the Saturday games, uh, there's a fair bit here on offer uh, and the weather could be a factor in a couple of these but we'll go through them, have a look uh, and you guys can let me know what you think about these ones. Uh, the first one sees the Highlanders taking on the Chiefs. Highlanders are at home but this one is in Fiji. Uh, as teams number 5 and 6 uh, coming together, the Chiefs are 3 points behind the Highlanders on the table. Uh, the Highlanders themselves are only five points behind the Hurricanes, so it's all pretty tight uh, with those teams. So there's lots to play for. Uh, but like I said, it's in Fiji, so uh, how the weather is going to affect this game could be interesting. Uh, the Highlanders, most of their All Blacks are back. So you got Aaron Smith, Luke Whitelock, uh, Himopo, Naholo, Ben Smith are all starting. Uh, but there's no Squire. Uh, for this one, the Holo's in his 50th game, which is in Fiji, and he's from Fiji, so that's that's pretty cool, uh, pretty special for him. Elliot Dixon starts at six because Frizzell's on the bench, so uh, it's a pretty strong-looking Highlanders team, to be fair. Uh, for the Chiefs, it's a pretty similar deal as the um, as the Highlanders; they got most of their big guns back. Obviously, still no Brody Retallick; he's still not right from his injury that was kind of um, sustained in that last game before the international break. Uh, so Damian McKenzie's back, uh, Anton Leonard Brown is back, Sam Kane is back. Uh, good news for them, Tyler Ardron's back. He missed the Canada games with uh, a bit of concussion. So uh, he's back and he's in the second row, so filling in for Vitalik. Uh, Harris is on parental leave, so um, Paul White starts uh, at hooker. So yeah, Fiji's going to be hot. I mean, New Zealand right now is all single digits uh, in the weather. Dunedin especially is pretty cold, but this is Fiji. Uh, so Fiji's up in the 20s. How much effect that's going to be, I guess, remains to be seen. 20 is not that bad. It's not like some other places that we've seen Super Rugby played, but uh, it's still pretty warm, so we can expect some pretty tired legs with guys um, just starting to get pretty hot. Uh, there's going to be a bit of a question about which side the Fijian fans support, because the Chiefs have been pretty good. They've taken games to Fiji uh, over the last couple of years, um, but then... The Highlanders have got Waisaki Naholo. So that'll be uh, just an interesting one to see which way the fans go. Um, this game could have a pretty big influence on how the final standings uh, for the playoffs um, finish because, by all me, all, you know, it looks like both these teams are going to make the playoffs. Uh, just the ranking is kind of the question. Uh, there's still a chance that they could chase down the Hurricanes, so I guess we will see. Um, but yeah, the, the Highlanders are really strong at home. Their home record's impeccable, but this is not their traditional home. This is in Fiji. So if they lose this one, uh, questions about taking a game away from Forsyth Bar will probably be raised. But um, I think overall, it's, it's good for Super Rugby to, uh, to, to take games to the islands from time to time just because so many uh, players from, uh, from various Pacific nations play in Super Rugby. So... Yeah, overall, it's a good look. Uh, the Highlanders by four are what the bookies are saying. So it is predicted to be a pretty tight one. Uh, the next one, the Brumbies take on the Hurricanes over in Canberra. And in this round, this is our first kind of top and bottom clash. I mean, although the, the Brumbies aren't exactly at the bottom, I think they're in 10th. Uh, and the Hurricanes are in 4th. It doesn't seem like that much difference. But by points, the Hurricanes would be in 2nd. They're 20 points ahead of the Brumbies. Uh, so there's a pretty big gulf between the teams. You can see the Hurricanes have won twice as many games uh, as the Brumbies. So yeah, it's got the look of a pretty tough game, but uh, the Hurricanes are without some big names. So uh, for the Brumbies, Falau Fainga is back. He's been uh, training with the Wallabies during the international break, so hopefully he's uh, kind of learned something and can bring that to this this game. Uh, no Alan Alalatoa, so Ben Alexander is playing in this one. No Sam Carter. So the second row is Rory Arnold and uh, Blake Enova. Pocock, Kusak, and Nasirani make up their back row, which is a pretty useful looking back row, if you're honest. Uh, Powell, who just signed the contract extension, starts at 9. Lydia Fano's at 10. And Banks, who's been on hot form, uh, is at 15. We'll see if he can continue that, having had a bit of a break. Uh, for the Canes, uh, Brad Shields is having a rest. So TJ Perinara is captaining the side. Bowden Barrett still recovering from that concussion. He... He suffered in that second test against the French, so he's not playing. Jackson Garden Bishop starts at 10. Uh, it's a big test for him. Apparently, he played pretty well in um, just uh, some kind of break games that they had 
I don't know what to call them. Um, but yeah, they, they, they played a game during the international break to, um, I guess, keep Matt Sharpness, and apparently he played well. Uh, also, no Adi Savia, so Henwood starts at 7. Uh, Jordi Barrett's at 13, so Nihi Milnaskara is at fullback. So it's a, it's a slightly changed uh, Hurricanes team from what we're used to seeing. Uh, the Brumbies could definitely use a feel-good win. There's been issues with attendance there this season. Uh, a win over the Hurricanes would certainly lift kind of spirits in Canberra. Um, and this Hurricanes team is missing a few big guns, so it might be a chance for them to, I don't know, just to surprise them a wee bit. Uh, Canes are now nine points behind the Crusaders, which is looking like a bit of a golf. Uh, I think they probably should be looking more over their shoulder at the, uh, the Highlanders who are chasing them. Um, to try and hold on to fourth rather than worrying about chasing down the Crusaders at this point. Obviously, you've got to go out and win all your games and see how things go, but um, yeah, there's no guarantee that they will finish uh, in that fourth spot and get a home uh, final if um, if they slip up here. So Canes by 11 is what the bookies are saying, so they're picking this one to be uh, a pretty comfortable one. Uh, next game, Sun Wolves Bulls is another one where you're thinking the weather, the weather, the weather, because it's being played in Singapore, and the temperatures there are just below 30 uh, from what I've seen at the moment, which is pretty hot weather to be running around and playing rugby in, uh, especially when you know uh, most of the Southern Hemisphere countries are, are pretty cool at the moment. Uh, Sun Wolves Jamie Joseph is back in New Zealand um, having some back I think it's surgery he's having uh, issues with his back so Tony Brown's stepping in to uh, take charge while he's away uh, there's a few players back in the mix who've been on international duty uh, Uchida starts at 9 and Parker's at 10 uh, Brits moves over to 6 from number 8 so Tokunaga is at 8 uh, Grant Hatting's on the bench so that'll be interesting to see how their line out goes because I back him as their premium line-out jumper, but um, yeah, he's on the bench. So I guess if, if things start to go a bit awry, he can, he can jump on pretty early. Uh, for the Bulls, there's a few faces that we haven't seen in a while coming into the lineup. Ambrose Papier gets a start at 9. Uh, Pollard is captaining the team from 10. Uh, Olingo's on the right wing. Kirsten and Liebenberger at 7 and 8. And Maratula, who we haven't seen at all this season, I believe, uh, is the reserve hooker. Adrian Strauss, who said he's going to retire at the end of the season, he's not in the squad. I'm not sure if he's hurt or if he's just not traveling to Singapore. Um, he's only got a couple of games left in his career before he's all done and dusted. So, um, yeah, it's kind of big news for Bulls fans, Springboks fans. It's a sad thing. I mean, especially seeing as he's been playing that well this season, there was talks of him coming back for a, a quick Springbok appearance, but um, not to be. Uh, for the Sun Wolves... They had gone on a little bit of a run, if you can call it that, when they got their two wins in a row. Uh, it was not long before the international break, which kind of came at a bad time, because um, just before it, for I think two games of their Australian tour, they pulled out all their Japanese uh, national team players. So it was kind of a Sun Wolves B team that toured Australia and got, uh, got beaten twice. So uh, good to have some of the other players back. Um, they may be able to use the weather to the advantage here if, if they're more accustomed to the hot conditions. Uh, for the Bulls, they're 10 points off the playoffs, so it's an unlikely uh, road to the playoffs for them, but I mean, all they can do is just win all their games. If they're to go into Singapore and get a bonus point, it'll put them one step closer, but it's, it's a pretty long road. Um, if they lose it, then yeah, it's just it's going to be uh, pretty tragic for them. Uh, Bulls by six is what the, uh, the bookmakers say. Uh, we'll see how this one goes in Singapore. Uh, the next one, Sharks and Lions. It's a long time since these two teams have played each other. It was back in week one uh, that the Lions got that victory in, uh, in Johannesburg. It was uh, 26 points to 19. Uh, back in that game, I think it was Thomas the Toy's kind of first Super Rugby game uh, starting at tight head. And he, he was uh, under the pump for a fair bit of that game. Uh, but he's, he's improved his scrummaging a lot in that position uh, this season. So it should be a bit of a different prospect uh, this week. For the Sharks, it's a pretty strong looking team. They've got the Beast, Akavanda Merva, uh, Thomas the Toy in the front row, Springboks, Esther Hazen, and Arm in the in the midfield. Bosch is at 15. All three Dupria brothers are playing. So it's a, it's a pretty big, uh, impressive Sharks team. But likewise, for the Lions, Malcolm Marks is back. It's his 50th game. Warren Whiteley's back. Uh, Courtney Scosson's back on the bench. So there's a lot of names back. Uh, you got Mapo back at 13. Cronier's at 9. 
This is a Lions team that we haven't seen line up like this for quite some time. So we'll see if these uh, these big guns are able to, to boost them back to that level that we kind of got accustomed to seeing to last year. There was a bit of a funny exchange between uh, the social media teams of the Lions and the Sharks recently because there's news that Rohan Jansa van Rensburg is going to uh, to play for Sale Sharks. The Lions have released him. Uh, but in their release, the Lions media people said that it was the Sharks, like the Cell Sea Sharks. And then there was a bit of banter between them saying, fake news, not fake news, blah, blah, blah. It was um, it was amusing. Uh, you'd have to say the Sharks got the better of that one because it was the Lions media team that stuffed it up. So we'll see if the same happens on the pitch. Uh, Sharks are sitting outside the playoffs in ninth spot. Six points behind the Jaguars, so they'll need a pretty good run to make it in a similar position to the Bulls, but actually slightly ahead. Uh, the Lions are still comfortable in South African Conference with a six-point buffer, but they have played one more game than most of the teams chasing them, so uh, it's not like they can afford to just take it easy. Um, and also, they're only five points ahead of the Waratahs, who could pip them for that second spot on the table. So the three conference leaders, the Crusaders, are pretty much out and out in front. But uh, second and third, which could mean a big difference in terms of finals. Uh, yeah, the Lions won't want to drop that second spot to the Tars or, or the Rebels, potentially. Um, so yeah, it, it's an interesting one. The Lions by four is what the bookies are saying. Uh, but there's a, both two pretty strong teams with uh, lots of spring box uh, on the field, so we'll see how things go. Uh, the last one, the Jaguars take on the Stormers. Uh, Jaguars eight five and zero. Stormers five nine and zero. So not their great, uh, not their best season. But I mean, the Jaguars are on a great run in Super Rugby. They are six wins on the trot. But over the international window, the pretty much the same team as the Pumas were abysmal. Lost all three games to two to Wales, one to Scotland. And played just so poorly. It was really, really hard to watch after seeing uh, these guys play so well in Super Rugby. So we'll see if putting on that Jaguars jersey kind of transforms them into the team we, we know and love. Um, and for the Stormers, season's pretty much gone. But um, they've got one last chance to get an away win. They've been so poor away from home this season. That real low point against the, the Sunwolves where they lost away. So uh, we'll see if they can kind of turn things around. Uh, the week one result between these two teams was the Stormers winning it at Newlands, 28 points to 20. Uh, but much has changed since that uh, in the terms of this season. Uh, for the Jaguars, Bertrano gets a start ahead of Landajo, so it's a switch around from uh, what happened with the Pumas. Uh, Delgi and Buffelli are still starting, as is Sanchez. Uh, second row is Petty and Lavanini, so plenty of bulk there. Ortega Desio starts at 8, and it's uh, for the most part a pretty familiar Jaguars lineup. For the Stormers, you've got Box, uh, Kitsoff and Benambi and uh, Wuko Low in that front row, so it's pretty strong looking. Khaleesi starting. Uh, Duvanaka and Jean-Luc Duplessis are 9 and 10, so it'll be interesting to see how those guys go because it's been a while since we've seen them in action. Uh, Dylan Lades is at 15, um, so there's still plenty of talent in the Stormers team. Uh, compared to what their results have been this season. Um, the Jaguar is still pushing for the playoffs. They're in 8th, so they're, they're in it at the moment. They've got a wee buffer ahead of the Sharks, but not enough that they can just kind of sit back kind of a similar position to the Lions. They can't just uh, sit back. They need to keep pushing forward. Uh, the Stormers have only got two games left in this season, one away and one at home, and like I said, this is their last chance to win away. We'll see if they can do it. Um, yeah, it's, it's not been a great season. Uh, then they've got that one game at home. The Jaguars by seven is what the bookies are saying, which is kind of um, a bit of confidence despite the fact that they've been on really poor run with Argentina. So we'll see how they go. Uh, what do you guys think about these games? Which one are you most looking forward to? How do you think the weather is going to affect these guys over in Singapore and in Fiji? Do you think it's going to be an issue or perhaps a non-issue? Jackson Garden Bashup starting for the Hurricanes is a big, is a big one to see. And of course, these two South African conference clashes are going to be pretty important uh, in terms of the final um, standings. All right, guys, yeah, let me know your thoughts and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.